what's going on guys it's brian jack with some man's comics and we have another great top 10 video for you you hear us talk on this channel all the time about our channel sponsor frankie's comics and about some of the exclusive variants they're putting out and some really hot ones recently but not only do they have some recent hot ones but this video is going to highlight some of their exclusive variants that they had in the past that's right, Brian. We've been talking about Frankie's comics for the past few months, but they are not new to this. They've been making iconic books, classic covers, highlighting some of the biggest moments in comics history, and they've been doing it for years. And we're going to highlight the top 10 books in Frankie's comics history. We're talking about amazing covers, classic issues, iconic variants, and we're going to start right now. That's right, so kicking us off, we have Baby Teeth number one, that great book from Aftershock, but not only Aftershock, little known author known as Donny Cates. Frankie's had that awesome Mike Ruth lenticular variant for this. Yeah, that's right, Brian. See, now here's the thing. The good folks at Frankie's Comics, Kevin Fields and Associates, they know when to strike while the iron's hot. Not really known for their independent comics variants, coming off the heels of God Country and Redneck, they knew that Baby Teeth was a surefire success. And they brought the heat here, coming with this premium lenticular variant that had an inflated asking price but sold out and is trading still to this day as the Baby Teeth variant to get. This book sold as recent as May 1st for $40, and it's a tough one to find. So be on the lookout for this great Donny Cates variant, which easily could see spikes when this book inevitably gets optioned at some point. Yeah, so it was a great cover. The lenticular had like a good and evil side to it. Then they also had limited copies of non-lenticular of the good cover and the evil cover, and those sell for a premium as well. Then at number nine, you're going to see quite a trend on this list with artists. Frankie's picks great artists, and we're talking right now that Iron Fist number one Del Auto variant, fantastic cover, also met with some controversy, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This one was a major release. It was early on in the Frankie's Comics variant program. Um, this one had all those internet watchdogs paying attention to it, and it taught the market a lot about things like comp copies for creators and things like that that exist outside the scope of the normal retailer exclusive print run numbers. And this book came with four covers. We're talking about a regular cover, a virgin cover. There was a black and white cover as well as a sketch cover. Um, this is probably the best depiction of Iron Fist I think I've ever seen. The bloody knuckles, um, really a, a hardcore badass cover. And you mentioned cover artists. That's something that Frankie's Comics has always been in tune with is the artist of the moment. Uh, when this book was released, that's, that was at the height of Del Otto's reign. Um, and he was able to elevate a character like Iron Fist with this book. This book's actually pretty affordable. You can get the regular cover for as low as about $15 to $20 on the back issue market, but absolute iconic release. And we saw a nice follow-up with the upcoming Defenders series, which also got a Delato Iron Fist cover. And they're a great one-two punch to put together in your collection. If Iron Fist spikes... In the uh, with the upcoming MCU movies and some of the kind of um, martial arts lore that's going to be brought into those films, I would absolutely pay attention to these books. Yeah, and by the way, we're going to see more Del Otto later in this list as well. Then coming at that number eight spot, we get that Detective Comics 1000 Ji Hung Lee variant. This is one that lit up the internet when it went on for sale. We're talking about that fantastic Harley in the Rain cover. Yeah, you know, Detective Comics 1000 is one of those books that got kind of um, hit hard by critics in the comics market, but good cover art is able to overcome some of these obstacles, and that's what you see here. This is an iconic Harley Quinn cover. This is one of those books where, even if you're not aware of Frankie's Comics variants, you have seen this cover art image. It made its rounds all throughout the internet comic community. Uh, it's a big hit. You got three different versions of this cover. Again, we've got a trade dress of Virgin and a black and white. All of them at this point on the back issue market will cost you about $40 each. So you can kind of take your pick with your favorite cover. But I really think that this is one that's going to be here to stay. And it really ushered in Ji Hyung Lee as an artist and kind of his style. And he would build on this style in the future with some upcoming releases. Next on the list, we have the more recent Venom run with Venom number three. This one was a Scon variant with another gorgeous cover. Yeah, now you're talking about 
a gorgeous cover, and we talked and about issue, that. Right, right. The quality of cover. He, you're getting all your boxes checked with this one, Brian. You're talking about cover art, scan, popular artists, especially at the time of this release. Um, secondly, you're talking about a major run. Frankie's Comics knows when to jump on runs. They did it early on with Venom, and they did it again when Donny Cates took over Venom, doing exclusive for all of the early issues in the run. But finally, here we have a first appearance, a key issue, a monumental book, and Frankie's Comics is there to put their stamp on the market with this one. This is, of course, the first appearance of Null, and it's a book that we've talked about in all forms and fashions. And because of that, this book is also trading well above its initial release price, selling at about $38 to $40 right now, and that's just the trade dress version. The last edition of the Virgin cover that got put on eBay went for a whopping $175. Then hitting us number six on the list, we get Venom number seven. This is another gorgeous cover, but this time by Clayton Crane. And we got that Infinity Gauntlet on the cover as well. Right. There's several things going on here with this release, Brian. This is one that's fun and great to share some context with the comic community about. First off, this cover is by, as you mentioned, Clayton Crane, an artist who is right at home of Frankie's comics, is oftentimes put under commission by Frank. He's brought out to conventions to do work. He's done a ton of covers for Frankie's comics, has a great relationship with the brand, and he is kind of one of the stable of artists that Frankie's comics always taps to bring the heat, and he brought it with this one. This is also, again, that Donny Cates Venom run, and also, again, a key issue because we're talking about the first cameo appearance of Dylan Brock, but that isn't what makes this one cool. I'm going to tell you what makes this one cool. Here's a little inside baseball for you. A couple of years ago, I was at Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Frankie's Comics booth with Clayton Crane right in the building doing commissions for fans. And I watched him draw this very cover for a fan for a commission. This was literally artwork commissioned by just a member of the comic community. This was his idea and concept. I watched Clayton Crane make it, and Frankie's Comics knew to jump on this and make this a cover. And that's what I love about Frankie's Comics, Kevin Fields and his whole team, is they know when to strike while the iron's hot. And that's what happened with this. It's so cool that I got to see this start from a piece of original artwork and make its way all the way to a comic cover. And a comic cover that's iconic, because we're talking $70 in trade dress on the last sale well over $100 into almost $200 for that Virgin cover. Uh, so this is a tough find. Yeah, and like he said, if you're out at comic conventions, make sure you check out that Frankie's booth because a lot of times a lot of these artists we're talking about on this list are at that booth doing sketches and commissions just like Jack said. Then hitting on the bottom half of the list, coming at number five, this is another book that broke the internet when this came out for sale. We're talking about that Dark Knight's Metal Number three, Francesco Matina variant. This was before people had Matina fatigue or he was being accused of copying art. Had that gorgeous cover with Batman or Laughs with that fish hook. Everyone was buying this up and it was a great book nonetheless. You can literally mark time in the comics industry and know who are the hottest cover artists at that time by who's doing variant covers for Frankie's comics. Because at this moment, this was Matina mania. It was running wild all over the comics industry. <laughs> Uh, there was no stopping Matino from incentive covers to regular covers all the way to these retailer exclusive. And this was no different. Coming on the heels of Dark Knight's Metal number two, as well as Teen Titans 12, the first appearance. You can debate. We're not comics politicians of Batman Who Laughs. And this was that iconic cover. The market was in full, full fervor, heat mode, FOMO, whatever you want to call it. They were looking for Batman Who Laughs, Frankie's Comics delivered with this cover. And here's the thing about this one, Brian. On the secondary market right now, you can get this book in trade dress form for only about $12. So it's like, what made this book so hot? Well, I'll tell you, we're living in the world of manufactured scarcity. The average released these days from these uh, retail exclusive dealers. They're taking a 3,000 print run, boom, they're chopping 2,500 off the top. They're telling you it's limited to 500 and you don't know where the other 2,500 went. This book was a legit 3,000 copy sellout. Sold out so much, so fast, was so iconic. They had to bring it back in a foil edition during convention season, as well as part of a two-part set with a foil Teen Titans 12. Not on this list, but a very cool Frankie's Comics variant nonetheless. 
So, Jack, you mentioned the trade dress, but I remember the fervor really being for that Virgin variant. The oh, yeah. Virgin variant, no trade dress on it, not even that minimal trade dress we see on the cover Bs right now. Absolute pop. People are hunting that. In fact, it's still demanding kind of a premium. The last one sold in February for what, like $150? There's only one right now listed on eBay with six days left, and that's at $50 right now. So it's not easy to find. No, I think it ended up in a lot of people's PCs. Then next on the list, we have a more recent release from Frankie's, and we got that Gwen Stacy number two Ji Hung Lee variant. This is another one that sold out within hours. Yeah, and again, it's another situation of Frankie's Comics, Kevin Fields, and his team jumping on a trend. Ji Young Lee had that iconic uh, Ghost Spider incentive variant, hit big numbers, was on everybody's radar, was on everybody's want list, and he brought the follow-up heat with this Gwen Stacy 2 release, coming with three different covers. You're talking about that trade dress, and the trade dress is really gorgeous on this one. I really think it adds a lot, as well as the Virgin cover and that special unmasked edition that was supposed to come out as a convention variant but got really messed up with the entire COVID situation and instead was put up as a special drop release on the frankiescomics.com website. This book is selling as a set for about $120. You're getting about $40 individually per book. Um, Virgin going for a little bit more, but not too much. People seem to like the trade dress. And you know, this is a cool book because all three versions of this cover were available in bolo boxes for our Patreon members at patreon.com slash Comics. You mentioned that Unmasked variant being exclusive. I believe those were exclusive to WonderCon and MegaCon, of course, those got canceled with the whole COVID situation, so they released them on the website, and of course, they sold out really quick. So we are down to the bottom three, and then coming in at number three, an artist you've heard quite a few times on this list, but we got X-Men Red number one, G. Hung Lee variant. Yes, that's right. You may not remember, but before the X-Men books got segmented into all these crazy teams, they had this even more insane color coding system, and X-Men Red number one. Uh, was the first issue in this version of the X team. But one of the most iconic covers, probably the most iconic cover of this release, was this Frankie's Comics variant, this X-23 cover, coming out in the middle of all of this X-23 lore at King Heat. But this cover was honestly the most popular for the booty shot. This reverse angle shot of X-23 uh, definitely ha got people talking. This is a tough one to find. It's selling for about $35 in trade dress, and the Virgin is even more scarce. None have been sold on eBay in the last 30 to 90 days. None are listed online except for one, a copy that's listed as VF to mid-grade, a real sketchy listing title, and is currently selling for $51 with two days left. So this is definitely a book to be on the lookout for. And this book was so popular, so iconic, that later on, we had to bring it up again. With the recent Jonathan Hickman released X-Men releases, we got a Ji Hyung Lee follow-up. Ji Hyung Lee likes to do series of variants, and Frankie's Comics has been smart to capitalize on this and roll out these variants that allow them to build off of the popularity of the previous releases. So if you were all about this X-Men Red book, we brought the booty shot back with X-Men number one and then X-Force number one, giving you that reverse side. So with these two books, you've got the reverse shot and the forward facing shot of X-23 in her X-Force garb. Great cover, uh, great series, three variants, and definitely ones to be on the lookout for. So we are down to number two, and to be honest, there's not much that separates number two and number one, but at number two, we have that Niobe, She is Life number one, limited to 100 exclusive variant by Ashley Woods. That's right. Now, this Stranger Comics release uh, of a title that has since been picked up as part of a deal through HBO, I believe through the HBO Max app, which has a lot of people excited and none more than the Stranger Comics crew because they will tell you at a convention they are the next Walking Dead. So the comic community has listened. And people have uh, always been kind of high on Naomi speculation. And oh, whenever that happens, people are always looking for that rarest book. And this book is the rarest cover, often dubbed the Waterfall Edition or the Hockness variant, because this book was done, it's an exclusive, uh, in collaboration with Canadian comics legend Terry Hockness. Uh, so it was a Hockness Comics, Frankie's Comics 
collaboration. And when this book took off, this became the go-to book and to this day has stayed the go-to Naomi book. You're talking about the last raw sale clicking off in March at $750, a 96, the most recent sale in the middle of April went for $500 and one copy is listed currently online, a graded 96, and it's being asked $800 for it. So this is by far the champion of all Frankie's Comics champions when it comes to the secondary market value. And it's an example of scarcity being the reason why this book is in the demand that it's in. But that combined with a media option rumor or media option news equal this back issue market gold. So we are down to the top spot, the number one spot on the all time Frankie's exclusive variant list. This might not be the one that conquered the secondary market. We talked about Niobe doing that. But this is the one that kind of opened up the floodgates for Frankie's. It was kind of the renaissance for his exclusive variant program. This is the one that put Frankie's on the map with a lot of people in the comic community. And we are talking about that Venom number one exclusive by Gabrielle Del Otto. That's right. This is the book that made everybody aware of that Frankie's Comics dog logo that uh, really has adorned the back of so many key issues. Um, we talked about this run already, but this kind of checks several boxes of themes. We've talked about about what makes Frankie's Comics Frankie's Comics. First off, this is Frankie's jumping on an iconic run uh, when Venom was coming back and rebooting. This is the first appearance of Lee Price, uh, so it's a key issue. And they jumped on the first four issues. They got the hottest cover artist in the game, Gabrielle Del Otto, to do this amazing four-issue uh, wraparound variant set that really is amazing. And it's the first time that really Frankie's comics got pressed in front of everybody's faces. You could not deny them. Everybody was talking about this Del Otto Venom cover, and it was just an undeniable force. There is a very cool listing right now on eBay, 12 uh, issues you're talking about all four one through four of these frankie's venom del Otto books with the trade dress the virgin and the black and white and that set selling for about 460 dollars it's really tough to find these old frankie's comics releases in the wild at this point it, the trade dress for issue number one of this book sells for about 30 dollars with the Virgin going significantly more and being extremely tough to find. It's actually easier to find in graded condition rather than raw. So this is definitely the book to be on the lookout for. It's the book that made Frankie's comics what, it, what they are. And it's the one that I will always think about when I think about Frankie's comics and their history. Yeah, this is one that we think about, especially when we talk to Kevin about creating this partnership and the, having him be a channel sponsor. We think back to those when we started buying those Frankie variants. Now, I understand this is the top 10 list for Frankie's exclusive variants. Now, there's a lot of people out there that don't like store exclusive variants, and that's why we always say buy what you like. But there's collectors out there for every market, including store exclusive. And Kevin Fields is just one of the nicest guys, isn't he, Jack? Oh, you know, absolutely. Real nice guy. His wife couldn't be more amazing. All the employees that work for him, I always have a great time talking to him. To, uh, hanging out with him at conventions during convention season um, and seeing the heat that he's going to bring to the market. Now, you mentioned us working with him. And I know you said that some people may not be for retailer exclusives, but that was kind of the point of this show was to highlight some of the great work that Frankie's Comics has done over the years, some of the contributions they've made to the comics market. And that's why we are proud to be associated with Kevin Fields of Frankie's Comic, because this is a brand that does not take away from the comics community. They add to it, offering great products, quality customer service, and really amazing covers that stand the test of time, which is why years later, we're talking about them here in this top 10 list. Yeah, if there's ever a blue collar guy in comic books, Kevin Fields is that guy. So we love Frankie's comics and we're fortunate enough to have him as a channel sponsor. And remember, if you sign up at patreon.com forward slash simple man's comics for that premium bolo box, you're getting these exclusive variants from Frankie's, the newer releases in each one of those boxes. We're putting two of them in right now, plus some other books, but you're guaranteed two Frankie's exclusives. Again, that's at patreon.com forward slash simple man's comics. Put the link in the description as well. But that's not all, Brian. We couldn't fit all the iconic Frankie's comics books into this list 
we reached out to Kevin Fields for Frankie's Comics, and we let him kind of tell us what were the 10 books that have been most iconic and important to his brand. But some of my favorites, we had to leave off that Adam Hughes Vampirella, that Ska number five Venom, that's red hot right now. So be sure to check out this honorable mention slideshow with some other great heaters coming from frankiescomics.com. <laughs> 